Hi, I'm Professor Kreitziger from Bryant and Stratton College, and I am going to demonstrate our respiratory exam for Fundamentals Nursing 103. And thank you to my student, Trent. Thanks for agreeing to do this. Of course. Uh, so, hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, here's where I introduce myself. Uh, can you tell me your name and date of birth, please? Uh, Trent Bowden, June 8, 95. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so, I'm going to be doing a respiratory exam today. So, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, do you smoke? No. Okay. And um, have you ever been diagnosed with any respiratory illnesses or conditions at all? No, no I have not. Okay, good. All right, so when I first walk in the room, what I want to do is see if my client is in any kind of distress at all. That's our biggest thing. So um, with respiratory distress, there's kind of two different um, time frames for it. So there's early hypoxia, late hypoxia. Early hypoxia is um, your client, because um, vital signs are a part of this too, don't forget, uh, including respiratory rate. So early hypoxia tends to um, be along with our fight or flight responses. So tachycardia, tachypnea, so elevated vital signs basically. Um, client might be a little bit anxious, which you aren't, which is good. Um, you might see some nasal flaring, like client's trying to breathe really hard. Um, and you know, kind of appear to be in some kind of distress like that, uh, might have some paler skin than we would expect for ethnic group. Uh, late hypoxia is where we've exhausted all of our fight or flight, so bradycardia, bradypnea, low respiratory rate, hypotension, um, confusion or stupor can go along with that. So you want to be clear on those early and late signs because um, we can intervene much more easily with the early signs. So no acute distress. I'm also looking at your, um, what we could call our body habitus. Uh, you know, you have a nice erect posture. You're not leaning forward like you're trying to breathe. I don't see um, that you're like barrel chested at all like we would see with our, um, our COPD patients. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, you don't have like any kind of scoliosis, kyphosis, you don't have any abdominal distension for any reason. So those are um, some other things that we would also inspect. And also really importantly, and I'm just going to take your gown down a little bit if it's okay, uh, we're also looking for, um, and all over, you know, back, sides, front, is um, accessory muscle use. So I don't see any, um, you know, you're not using the muscles here to breathe because normally breathing should be effortless. Okay, and I don't see any retractions in between your intercostal muscles at all. So you're not really struggling to breathe. So that's also part of that um, acute distress that we talk about. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, can I have you turn so we can kind of see sure. your back here? So um, for um, our inspection too, like another way that we can think about um, whether our client is barrel chested or not is that AP to transverse diameter. So the AP diameter is like the front to back and you can use your hand. I'm just going to have you move your arm a little bit. Um, so there's about one hand width here and then about two of my hands worth here. So that's, um, you know, you're the appropriate diameter. So I'm also going to do what we call excursion. I'm going to put my hands around your back here and just kind of squeeze. And I don't know if you can see, like I'm squeezing like a little bit of, um, of your skin here. And I'm going to have you do one big inhale and exhale. Okay, and both of my hands move symmetrically and you really have good um, excursion when you inhale and exhale, so that's good. Um, I'm also going to do tactile frematis. Okay, so I'm going to put my hands here um, on your back symmetrically and I want you to say blue moon. Blue moon. Okay. Blue moon. And one more time. Blue moon. Okay, and I'm also going to do that on your front. So I should feel symmetrical vibrations. Blue moon. Okay, which I do. So the sound is going through your alveoli appropriately. Um, I won't tell you. <laughs> okay, so I'm also going to um, listen here. I'm going to do about 10 spots on your back. Okay, so let me know if you get lightheaded or anything. All right, and I want you to take a big inhale and exhale uh, each time I put my stethoscope on your skin. Now. Okay, great. And I'm going in between the shoulder blades because I don't want to listen over any bones. Okay, one more. That's four. Okay. Good. 
Okay, and one on the right side here. We have that extra lobe over there. Okay, good. So that's midline, kind of in the arm area, right about the brow line for on women is about where that would be. So I'm listening for uh, normal lung sounds. I'm also listening for any kind of adventitious lung sounds like wheezes, fine crackles, coarse crackles. Uh, strider, I should be able to hear just standing here. I don't hear any of those, either on inspiration or on expiration. Okay, so I'm gonna take your gown down again. And the same thing, I'm gonna try to get about eight, eight spots over here. So I'm gonna start right about the clavicle. Deep breath. You doing okay? Yes, yeah, yes, okay. I am. Thanks. I can breathe normal. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay, so all signs point to a healthy respiratory system. Any questions for me? I do not. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your help. Great. Thanks.